If you are in Ocean State, if you're a voter here, attention of politician tomorrow will be on some local government. And I will give you five of them and pay attention to these. These figures are very important. The voting population, where are these votes going to come up tomorrow? And which of these local governments, out of the 30 local government areas of Ocean State, will some of the big imprints be made tomorrow? Take, take a listen to this one. Oshogbo local government has 129,000 or more voting population. Very critical. Oshogbo is a local government area that houses the capital of Ocean State. Another local government area that politicians will have their attention on is um, a long local government with 90,000 voting population registered voters in a long local government area. And also another local government area that a lot of politicians will be looking at is Ifelodum, Elisha East, Elisha West. Those are big uh, local government area with over 60,000 voting population. Another one here. Look at this. Ife Centra, 107,000 voting population or more. Ife East has over 97,000 voting population. And Ayedade has over 60,000. Those are some of the six or seven local government areas that you need to watch out for. If you hear this local government, watch out for who is winning and how much of uh, the inroads some of these politicians will be making tomorrow. When you hear the issues of vote buying, we pray that does not happen tomorrow. These are possibilities of what could happen. Let's get into the conversation here. Let uh, my guests break it all down for, for us. I have the benefits of um, uh, the presence of the resident electoral commissioner of INEC in charge of this election in Austrian state, Mr. Olusha Gwagbaje, and uh, with us also is a convener of the Civil Society Election Situation Room, Clement Wanko. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on the show today. Let me begin with you. Uh, I know it's a busy time for you, but thank you uh, for making time out. Tomorrow, a lot of people are looking out, and the big question is around the issue of um, the ban on mobile phones. Heineck is serious about this, isn't it? Very, very. We are very, very serious about it. And uh, the chairman have done it when he came here on uh, Monday in the stakeholders forum. And like uh, I said earlier in one of the programs, on the 9th of uh, August this year, <coughs> the commission had a meeting in Oshubu here with party leaders and uh, the party, the contestants, immediately, after, immediately after their primaries. We call, we call, before their primaries, we call them, appeal to them to let us have a very peaceful primaries. After that, we invited them again, and they all were there. We appreciated them for doing this, and we also told them that we are going to campaign period now. We should also ensure that we have peaceful campaign. It was there that one of the representatives of the uh, PDP candidates, and that from a former commissioner, of justice in the state stood up and suggested that one of the measures that ANEC will adopt to ensure that we stop this vote buying should be by not allowing uh, 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 smartphones or any photographic equipment into the uh, polling booth. Not within the polling uh, station, but when you are going to the Kubiku. We told them, and then some other parties supported them that that was a good idea. We also told them that the commission has not taken any decision, but we will inform the commission of that suggestion so that the commission could consider it and then let us know what they feel about it. Did not get the feedback until the chairman came on Monday. Okay. When so he said that on that day, after collecting the ballot paper, the two to three minutes we are going to use between the ballot paper collection and go inside the cubicle to come and uh, to print the ballot paper, that period will not allow telephone to be used. Let's, let, let's take a, a, a quick pause. We'll go on this break. And when we come back, there are a few issues surrounding vote buying, mobile phone usage, the issues of deployment of uh, election materials, and what the INEC is doing, and perhaps what they have not done ahead of tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. The conversation appears to have just gotten started. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Units and uh, sections uh, that are professional, thorough professionals, apart from being civil defenders, 
Um, we have been doing this and we have been rehearsing this on how to improve on the, maybe the mistakes from our AKT election. And uh, we are fully prepared. And uh, we are working in tandem uh, with the Nigerian police, DCG Habila, uh, DIG Habila. We have the number, and we also have the specialized groups, the units and the sections uh, that are professional, thorough professionals, apart from being civil defenders. Uh, we have been doing this, and we have been rehearsing this, on how to improve on the, maybe the mistakes from our AKT election. And uh, we are fully prepared. And uh, we are working in tandem uh, with the Nigerian police, DCG Habila, uh, DIG Habila. You say we should prosecute. We cannot just prosecute people without effecting arrest, without investigating them, and then charging them to court. That is the stage. The security, the police, especially according to the Ultra Act, must make the arrest, must carry out the investigation, prepare the case file, then pass for an act. Either we do it jointly or we allow or, or they ask us to do it. But if this is, if this, uh, uh, Grants or these indices are not put in place. There is virtually nothing any can do.